gamers welcome back today we're gonna review middle earth shadows of mordor so shadows of mordor is an action-packed hacks and slash adventure game that has a very similar style to arkham city if you played the game before the combat with the combo systems and the countering of enemies also it has similar vibes to assassin creed series with the parkouring in the game especially the wall climbing the running along the ropes and the diving the game itself offers a nice mechanic thrown in called a nemesis system along with gorgeous graphics a lot of action, gore, and plenty of orcs to kill in this game. So as usual I like to stay spoiler free in the reviews. The game starts you off playing as Talion, a ranger from Gondor that guards the gate of Mordor and due to a certain event is now cursed and partnered with a wraith. Now together they take on the army of Sauron to exact vengeance while discovering the identity of the wraith who he himself does not know and also to break this curse. Now keep in mind the story to the game is not canon to the Lord of the Rings series but it is well done from the beginning to end. The voice acting to this game is done with top notch and care especially to the characters to bring to life in this game from Talion to the Rave along with all the other characters that we met during the quest and game uh, including the various evils that you'll face. The orcs and all the other creatures have their voice done really well to seem like they came from the Lord of the Ring movie. Sharp, eh? Cotton's coming. Better sharpen the swords, eh? And make sure our boots are nice and shiny. <laughs> Search all Mordor to kill man if have to. Not only is the voice acting really good, the sound effects of the game are really good. The sound of the ambiance, the weapons clashing, Talion hitting the muddy battlefield, the sound of raindrops heard of caradors in the distance you can hear log fighting in the corner of orcs and the sound of sword clashing along with orcs flesh being chopped off also the music score itself brings out a very epic atmosphere to the game it's really adrenaline pumping and really nicely composed the graphics of this game looks incredible and absolutely gorgeous now keep in mind the settings and requirements for this game was so high i couldn't run it off my 680 but i did turn it up to ultra ran at a stable 40 to 45 fps and sometimes taking hitches when there's a lot of action and battle going on so I'll be getting 980 and replaying the game in the future to take a look at full settings myself but I took a peek at it you know just to see what it offered and it looks absolutely fantastic from the background aesthetics to the armors and weapons the characters the orcs everything else included uh, the monkey ground itself was very detailed and done really craftfully well to show that it's a very immersive battlefield The enemies. The enemies in this game ranges from a variety of orcs at the battlefield. There are ghouls that roam the land when the bodies are gathered at night. There are herds of caradors all around the places and giant grogs at various locations and caves. And that's pretty much it. Not much in the variety of monsters that are out in the field. The map in the game is decently sized and takes place in two locations, Udun in the Sea of Nernin. The map icon shows the main mission, side missions, which includes missions ranging from human rescue mission, orc power struggle missions, legendary weapon task where you upgrade the bow, dagger, and sword, vendetta against other captains that avenge players who died in their game, which is a multiplayer feature, and finding hidden Mirian point items. There isn't much variety to them besides the main mission in the orc struggles where the orcs are always doing some different various tasks on the field. The environment itself has ruins, orc strongholds, and cave throughout the map of Udin and the Sea of Nernin. Udin is more of a dark and morbid environment, while Nernin has greeneries and plateaus you can climb. There's also interactable objects in the environment such as explodable pots, campfires, breakable walls, poisonable grogs, morgai flies, hives that you can shoot down and scare orcs, and also hanging baits that attract characters. So there's a bit of interactivity to the game's environment along with a day and night cycle and a rain system which is all nice. The gameplay. The combat system is very similar to the game Arkham City and has a nostalgic Assassin Creed to it especially in the parkour and the jumping and climbing and diving. The game uses a combo system of attacks and counters when fighting against enemies with streaks and execution finishers. After acquiring a certain amount of hits and blocks the player can execute and finish off the enemies. 
There's also a decent stealth system to the game to dispatch enemies. AI seems to react when they hear an orc die or tell you running about and will see an outline of his previous location to investigate. The enemy uses the cone of view to locate him. So basically the game can be played in two ways, either sword swinging or stealthing. At some missions, stealthing is the only options. The game controls option menus include the ability for players to also keybind, which is a good thing. Players will be taught how to pretty much attack, block, jump, dodge, and stealth to dispatch enemies early in the game as the basics. As the game progresses, Talion will be able to invest in abilities to make himself stronger. Players will need to master all these skills down to fight against a variety of evil on the battlefield. Though the game difficulty is questionable because of how easy it is to abuse the system, to get more of a challenge from the game itself it is better to turn off the indicators and HUDs and do less upgrades to make it more challenging in the gameplay because it can be quite easy for a few people out there. For me it was really easy in the beginning and then as time goes on it got a little bit harder. When As Talion levels up he's able to invest points into abilities and acquire a plethora of skills that will aid him in combat such as faster finishes, flurry attacks, dashes, and more all revolving around three weapons which are the bow, daggers, and sword. There's a total of 40 abilities he can invest in. Most of them can only be unlocked by leveling and doing the main quest or power struggle quest. The abilities themselves are really fun to use and really flashy. However, they can be really overpowering for him later on in the game, making it almost impossible for any orcs to stand against them. Even if an army was coming at him, you can really kill a lot of orcs with this. There's no difficulty at this point anymore. The attributes menu requires Mirian points which has to be invested in order to upgrade health, weapons, and rune slots. They are divided into resources and weapons branch. Each totals up to 30 total abilities to upgrade. Talion is able to place a divergence of ruins into weapons to upgrade their functions ranging from various stats against enemies based on its level and color quality from white, blue, and epic. Each weapon can only take a total of 5 runes once they are upgraded and can only be found off captains and war chiefs. If extra runes are acquired, they can be destroyed and converted into Mirian points. The start of the game definitely lies in the nemesis system and hunting of enemy ranked units. The system really adds an interesting fresh mechanic to the game. When meeting a captain, players is greeted by a dialogue if the captain experienced with either killing Talion before, hearing about him, or even fled from him. He'll spout a short verbal abuse on Talion at the start of the clash, which is great at times and other times downright creepy. <laughs> Sometimes the system can be quite repetitive because there's no way to skip the dialogue in any way or form, unless the captain is executable by stealth move or players kills him fast enough before they can speak. The orcs themselves outrank each other in various ways through their hierarchy. They'll duel each other, kill each other, ambush each other, you name it, or kill Italian and level up. Or if a player chooses, they can advance the orcs ranking through the tower by going to the tower and advancing time. As they level, they are ranked depending on their power level, which determines their stats as veteran, elite, or legendary. They are also completely randomized with names, titles, and looks making it hard to remember seeing them at times which gives it that dynamic feel to the system. Along with this the orcs are incorporated with weaknesses and strength so if a player exposes their weakness they'll start fleeing away and players will have to catch up to them and kill them. If they are exposed to something they really hate they'll get angry, recharge full health and start attacking the player. This gives the enemy a lot of personality because it shows that the players are not fighting something that's a machine but a living being that can be scared and brave at times or maybe sometimes foolish to face you. Sometimes the orcs are like walking shields. There can't be any damage to them unless a player exposes their weakness at all. So it will be almost impossible to kill them unless the weakness is exposed. Before finishing off, any orcs talion can use them to gain information on captain's whereabouts and weaknesses which can aid them in dispatching them quicker or use the captain to get the war chiefs the highest ranked in the hierarchy. Players can also use orcs to threaten other ranks so that they increase their levels and difficulty along with ruined epic drop chance or even take control of them through branding in which he is able to command and call out any orcs easily through the battlefield and have them fight among each other for his benefit. It is a fun feature but makes dominating the hierarchy too easy because the orcs have no way of countering this. Healing is only regenerated in this game through ruin skills, leveling up, and herbs. 
Some of the other features such as climbing in this game is very seamless, it's very easy to do. The other features such as QTE is only seen at time when you try to jump on mounts, on the verge of death, or finishing off certain enemies will require certain mouse movements along with button presses. These are only used to give players a second chance a few times, but sometimes enemies will not give the players that chance at attempting this at all. The multiplayer availability so far is only avenging other players who dies in other games to certain captains. This will be seen in the story mode. There's also a trial gameplay with a leadership board ranking. No other mode seen thus far. There's a lack of multiplayer in this game, so therefore, after beating the game, that's pretty much it for the replayability unless one wants to experience the whole Mordor story again. My opinion about the game, the Shadows of Mordor is a great fun base game to play that tested out some really fun mechanic. The Nemesis system, I can really see it being incorporated to future titles. It's beautiful and filled with top-notch sounds, music, and voice acting. It's a really fun game to play for like two days if one searches for everything and complete every mission. However, there are some cons to it too, such as the multiplayer. We all know this is a single player game, but there's only multiplayer during the story and there's only multiplayer trial, which the players score on a time-based event in the leaderboards. Unfortunately, that doesn't help the replayability because players can only play the game over and over again and kill captains, which can get repetitive after a while. The difficulty of the game was completely unscalable and can be easy depending on the situations. Um, turning off the HUD, advancing time, and threatening orcs is the best way to get the game harder, or fighting Warchief with all the captains together. The other thing is also natural enemy. Of course there's a ton of variation of orcs, but there's only herds of Caradors, lots of ghouls, and some grogs here and there. So hopefully we'll see more natural enemies in the next game. Uh, the variety of side missions can be repetitive after a while, there just isn't enough variation of them aside from the main mission being different each time, the other missions are just meh. They get really, really dry and boring and more of a task. The QTE for the final battle was probably the most disappointing con for me. Why? Because last bosses needs to be a challenge in video games. They shouldn't be QTEs when you press blip, 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 and then that's it. So hopefully we'll see an improvement of that in the future and see some real bosses. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching my review of Middle Earth Shadows of Mordor. Remember to subscribe, like, and tell your friends. Uh, remember to always have fun and game on. Oh, and check out my mini Taj I've made for the game. It's pretty damn cool, I think. What is this? Oh, what the f-